Hi, my name is Frasso Anamakis, and I am an emergency medicine resident at Maimonides Medical Center. Today, we will be demonstrating for you how to place a transvenous pacemaker. Here at Maimonides, all of our ERs and ICUs are now with the same kit. We currently have the Arrow 6 French transvenous pacemaker. So this is a one-stop shop, and this is the only kit, along with the box, that you need to place a transvenous pacemaker. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm using a ventricular pacing box, but this kit is compatible with any box that you have. For the purposes of this video, we are working under the assumption that you know how to place a cordis. This is the cordis that comes in the kit. Once it's correctly placed, you will take the dilator out and you will suture at the base pretty tightly to make sure that this does not move during the placement of the pacemaker. Now that your cordis is correctly placed and you have sutured it tightly at the base, the next step is to take the contamination shield and place it over the pacemaker. What you're going to do is take the clear tip and insert the tip of the pacemaker in, and you're going to thread it all the way proximally to the base. And when you get to the two black marks, that's when you're going to stop, and this is going to be cinched in proximally. The next step is very important. These are the pins. They are in the kit, and they are in a separate wrapping when you first open up the kit. Don't lose them. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the pins and you're going to place them into the gray tips. You actually have to push pretty tight like this until almost all the black is in the gray. Now with the magic of movies, I am my non-sterile assistant. So I will be taking this from my sterile me and this, and I will be placing them together. So in this step, what we do is we take these pins that we just used, and we're going to take the positive end shown here and place it into the positive end of the box. Then you take the minus end here and place it into the minus end of the box. And now we are going to talk about the box. We are going to talk about the initial steps. We're not going to actually do anything right now. What you're going to notice is that the heart rate is set to 100. And we have it at the maximum milliamps to ensure that we get maximal capture when it's time to place the pacemaker. And now the next step is very simple, but it's really important. What we're going to do is we're going to take this adapter and we're going to be placing it onto the introducer sheath. Place it like this, and now it's locked in. The reason this is important is once the pacemaker is in the correct place, this will tie it down and it won't move. And now it's time for the wire. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the tip of the pacemaker and you're going to place it through that introducer sheet that we just placed. Now you're going to go until the two black lines and I'll show you exactly why. By stopping at the two black lines, you ensure that the distal tip of your pacemaker is past the cordis. Okay. So now you just place the pacemaker wire through the distal tip of the cordis. Now, my hands over here are non-sterile me. Pretend that they're non-sterile me, okay? This step is important because I want you to note something. I want you to note that this syringe is the syringe that comes with the kit. It's important because it actually stops at 0.75 cc's. So this way you don't over inflate the pacemaker wire and actually ruin it, okay? So non-sterile me is going to inflate the pacemaker wire with air and lock it in place, okay? Now sterile me can go on and place the pacemaker. Now with the balloon up, we're going to advance the pacemaker wire until we get capture. And by capture, what I mean is you're going to see on the patient monitor, large rhythmic QRS complexes going at the rate that you had set the box at. So here we go. We're going to advance the pacemaker wire with decisive movements until we get capture. Usually you will not have to go beyond the four mark. Okay, so now you've got capture. That's really good. The next steps, what you do is you're going to take the balloon down, so your non-sterile assistant will deflate the balloon, and you're actually going to advance the pacemaker wire just a few millimeters to ensure that the tip of the pacemaker is sitting nicely in the ventricle. Next, we're going to cinch this tight. 
This is also really important to ensure that your correctly placed pacemaker wire won't move. Now the pacemaker wire is secured tightly. The last step in terms of the actual wire is that you're going to take this contamination shield. I have fully expanded it and you actually place it over the clear adapter so that all this holds securely in place and your wire remains sterile. All right, good job. Now your pacemaker wire is in place. The last step is going to be working the box. So down here, as you can see, we have the box with the millivoltage set at the maximum. Now we want to decrease it in order to find the, max, the optimal voltage. So I'm at 20. I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to be watching the monitor until I completely lose capture. Let's say on this patient, I lose capture at one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slowly bring it up until I gain capture. Let's say I gain capture at three. So now I'm gonna go at about two to three times that and that's what I'm going to keep my wire at. So we go here, that's it. Good job, you placed a pacemaker, it's all done. So in conclusion, things to remember, you have to work with a colleague on this. You're gonna be sterile and you need someone who's non-sterile that you trust to man the box. The next thing is this box that we use and the kit that we use are very straightforward. Know your equipment, take a look at it, and take time to watch this video before you place the wire. This will allow you to feel calm and confident during the placement. And always remember, call your cardiologist when you're about to do this, okay? Good luck. Thanks for watching.